Cheers. Well, I know it's not an Amiga, right? Right, yeah. Keep Atari ST's name out of it. Otherwise, you'll get what Chris Rock got, okay? Oh, wow! Yeah, you. Keep Atari ST's name out your fucking mouth. Tell you what, the postman, he's good for covering the owl address up. Well, he's a bad Atari ST fan. Anyway, in today's video, I am going to be talking about a Retro Gamer A500 Mini Special. Um, I am not an avid subscriber, unfortunately, to um, this magazine. I only get the special editions. So, obviously, with the release of the Mini around about a week, sort of 8th of April, is it, or something like that, I thought it was a no-brainer to get it. Um, now, I couldn't find it in any WH Smiths anywhere. Uh, and the only way to get it was subscribe and I thought, you know. So I scoured eBay and I found one. A lad said he got two, so we sell him one. Um, still sealed. Or when I say still sealed, it's in an envelope. Um, yeah, so as I say, I only get special editions. Last one I got was the Mighty Amiga book um, from the makers of Retro Gamer. Wow, what a book, what a book. So yeah, in today's video, I am just going to be opening it up and just having to read through. There's one or two sort of like big YouTuber um, videos on this magazine already. I just thought, you know, man need content, uh, buying a magazine, may as well film it. So yeah, I'm going to have a little look through it, a uh, quick scout through. I think the actual article is about five or six pages maybe. Um, and as I say, yeah, it's... Uh, just sort of just over a week away until the release of the A500 Mini. And I know it's not an Amiga product. It doesn't matter. The excitement that I got when ordering it and the excitement I'll get from when I go and pick it up. If you've recently watched Dan Wood's video on his unboxing, you will hear in his voice the excitement uh, of opening a new Amiga product. Uh, I haven't done that since 19... Was it 1992? The... Why, what was it? Was it 1992, the Wild, Weird and Wicked pack come out? Uh, that was the only Amiga I bought. After that, everything else was just sort of second hand. So, yeah, it's good to be sort of having something in 2022. Uh, something to look forward to. And, you know, we, we, we've we seen pies. We've got emulation. Basically, it's an emulated, you know, Amiga. So, yeah, anyway, enough babble. Um, let's crack on with um, this magazine. So, first of all, Let's see what it says. So it is, yeah. So it's from Future Publishing. Um, MagazineDirect.com. Right, and there we have it. <clears throat> wow. A lovely, nice and shiny sort of uh, cover. Does it spill onto the back? No. <clears throat> Now, as I say, I'm not an avid collector or an avid subscriber to uh, this magazine. It's only when, as I say, special editions come out, uh, you know, I'll just sort of like grab them. If, um, actually, I forgot Tesco. I know Tesco. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know Tesco by me dad's. I should have checked there. I didn't think, to be honest with you. Right, okay. Um, we have Agony on the 1200 just playing in the background classic piece of piano music right okay so here we have the front cover and it is a 10 page hands-on special um a found with mini there's a picture of the controller which i do not like picture of the mouse which i do like <coughs> pardon me zool speedball and you've got a variety of games that come with it we'll have a look at them in a minute uh, how Retro Game Limited is making yeah. So how Retro Games Limited is making the Amiga accessible to everyone. So we have the people who make this magazine. Right. So yeah, the Amiga is one of the most popular home computers around with a library of incredible games. I'm not going to read through it all because um, too much time. So yeah, here we have uh, page 18. We'll just have a little glance through the magazine. So here we have, uh, it looks like a Wii U. I'm going to tell you what, let's move that mouse out the way. Get a little bit of a better shot of it. 
There we go. Is that better? Yeah. <clears throat> Insomnia Gaming Festival, NEC Birmingham. 15th of the 4th, 22 to the 18th of the 4th, 2022. Back to the noughties. June 2005, the press reacts to the next generation ambitions of the Xbox 360, while the current generation suffers a rough month that gives Kratos ample room to shine. So the charts in 2005, PlayStation 2 was FIFA Street, Gran Turismo 4, Midnight Club 3, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, number 5, Brothers in Arms, um, Xbox was Jade Empire, Doom 3, Midnight Club 3, Lego Star Wars and Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. GameCube was uh, Mario Power Tennis, FIFA Street, Mario Kart, Double Dash, pardon me, really good game, Metroid Prime 2, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, uh, music was uh, Axel F, Crazy Frog, what an annoying little bastard that was, City of, Bill City of Blinding Lights, U2, Lonely, You Can't Feel, uh, feel Good Ink, Gorillas and one thing Amira is it I don't know I don't care right uh, <coughs> oh, I've got a really bad throat <coughs> that's excuse me right okay so uh, inside the A500 Mini Commodore's 16-bit hit is back in town and an acute form factor that has the potential to turn a whole generation onto the Amiga uh, we go hands-on with the machine and talk to Retro Games Limited to find out how much the whole project was to put together. Words by Nick Thorpe. Uh, we have the Chief Technology Officer Chris Smith from Retro Games Limited. Uh, we have Darren Melbourne, a Licensing Director for Retro Games Limited. And we'll just have a quick flick, um, you know, through the magazine before we sort of go back and just have a little read through. So there we have uh, Speedball 2, another classic Amiga game. Another world. Now this, I don't like. Taking back control, I mean, is there some sort of licensing issue where they sort of maybe, you know, couldn't have copied um, a Zipstick or Competition Pro? I never played Amiga games on one of them, so I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. I mean, there's some logic behind it. I'm no expert, so, you know, I'm just a mere you know, small YouTuber. So obviously there's your games. You have Alien Breed 3D, Another World, Arcade Pool, Alien Breed Special Edition 1992, All Terrain Racing, Project X Special Edition 1993, which is one of my faves. Simon the Sorcerer, Brutal Deluxe 2, Speedball 2, amazing. Worms, the director's cut. I was never, never a fan of Worms. Never a fan of Worms. I, play, I think I played it once or twice. I just couldn't get into it. Battle Chess, that was good. Uh, Cadver or Cadver, that was a good game. <clears throat> California Games, not bad. Dragon's Breath, F16 Combat Pilot, Kickoff 2, oh, wowzer. Lost Patrol, yeah, wow. Uh, Paladroid 90, never really played that. Pinball Dreams, whew, stunning even to this day. Quack, not really a fan. Uh, Stunt Car Racer, yeah, excellent. Supercars 2, oh my god, me throat, sorry. <coughs> Jesus, it's not the COVID or the cold. Supercars 2, wow, amazing. Chaos Engine, amazing. The Sentinel, yeah, wow. I first played that on the Spectrum and I was blown away by how weird it was. And I, still to this day, I don't know how to play it. But there's that sort of sense of like, you know, you're getting followed, watched and all that. Wow, yeah, really good game. Uh, Titus the Fox, yeah. Or as we used to say in school, it Titus the Fox. And it Zool, you know. One of the uh, classic Amiga games. So, as I'm uh, reading through this, right, okay, so it is quite an extensive um, article, which, you know, I won't read all the way through, and it's being covered by other YouTubers anyway, so, you know. One of the unfortunate realities of retro gaming is that some platforms are easier to get into than others. So anyone wants to get into Mega Drive would have no problem today. Uh, obviously, you've got like, you know, clone systems and stuff like that. Um, along with the PlayStation 1 Mini, uh, SNES Mini, stuff like that. Now, 
this was spoke about within the community for a long, long time. I mean, we, we ended up with the C64 Mini, which again, I'm, I wasn't really, well, I didn't have a C64 back in the day. So for me to buy one, um, it was about 120 quid uh, with the joystick you get. And I've got no memories of the C64 or Commodore 64. However, I do have in my possession and I may make a video on it. You may remember quite a while back, I done a video on this, which is the ZX Box Spectrum emulator. Essentially, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero loaded and loaded with um, games and it runs off, I think, a Fuse emulator. Now, back when I done the video, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Uh, I still don't know now. I just like to play the games, whatever. So fast forward, well, six months, five months. I now have in my possession a Commodore 64 box, which is, you know, sort of like the same as that. The video will come separately on that. Um, as I say, I've had no memories of any games I got it primarily for Rocky Horror Show, because Rocky Horror Show, um, I loved on the Spectrum, absolutely loved the game, and uh, I would have loved to see it on the Amiga, but no, pff, you know, it, it wasn't to be. So also in my possession, I have a Raspberry Pi 400. I primarily bought that for Chris Edwards' amazing work with Pi Amiga. Um, I've had that out for a while, but I need, do need to set that back up again. And also, I have an emulated Amiga 4000 in this nice little sort of mini sort of, you know, case. That is a Raspberry Pi. I think it's a 3B. And, um, yeah, I bought that loaded with uh, pretty much every Amiga game. Again, it's, you know, it's just emulation. I paid about... Ooh, £30 for the case separately, which, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Quality. That is my sort of, like, first Amiga Mini. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, it runs really well. As I say, the desktop and the machine it emulates primarily is an Amiga 4000. But uh, I think you can change it. But, yeah, I don't know. There's all sorts of different weird setups and things to do. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so um, for me to buy an Amiga Mini... Well, for me to buy an Amiga 500 Mini, or oh, sorry, I'll take that back. For me to buy an A500 Mini, um, it's it's what why? Because I've got all this emulation around me. But yeah, as I've explained, it's primarily to do with uh, for sort of like memory sakes and stuff like that. I haven't bought an Amiga product or anything, as I say, since the 90s. So you know, for that little bit of sort of like get back your childhood for that brief minute. I might end up selling it somewhere down the line. I don't know, but uh, you know, up until that point, I'll, I'll probably be be happy with it. So yeah, anyway, all the the babble, I won't read through it all, but I, I'm, I'm going to mainly focus on, on games. Um, the games, I don't know how they choose the games to be honest with you. I know there's some sort of like licensing that allows or doesn't allow them. Um, now, some of my favourite Amiga games are on there, but sort of some of the other ones are not. I would love to have seen uh, Lotus 2. That game is just like, Jesus Christ. It's, I play it like virtually every other day. And that is that is no joke. You know, I do play it like quite a lot. Uh, Lotus 3 wasn't bad. Um, but yeah, I think the other ones are just fillers. They just, I don't know. I mean, Kickoff 2, amazing Project Act, amazing Chaos Engine, amazing uh, Pinball Dreams. There, there's, quite, there's quite a lot of good games on there. Uh, for sort of like us, the older generation, and they're trying to, you know, if they're trying to catch the, the younger generation as well, that kind of market, you know, maybe some sort of like pinball dreams might, you know, sort of speedball may, may sway them. I don't know, but um, yeah. So I mean, you know, like I've said, the controller. I, I don't know. I mean, no, I, I can't play. I've, I have tried to be honest with you. I've, I've tried playing an Amiga with um when i did have a cd32 i just couldn't do it i like to have the joystick stuck down or between my legs locked in place and just sort of like you know um 
play that way. So, you know, to start playing Speedball on something like this or Chaos Engine, it would have to be a seriously, you know, well-made controller. Not like the crap, as we all know, that the CD32, this kind of like deep idea always failed and stuff like that. So I don't know. Maybe it'd have to be, for me anyway, I mean, I know you can plug um, other joysticks in. Like I do have, if I can just find it very quickly. Um, actually, no, I can't find the actual thing. Or can I? Where is it? Um, right, okay. That's the zippy. Ah, I kind of where it is. <clears throat> no, I'll tell you what I'll do. Just let me put that there a minute. Oops. Right, okay, so a while back, uh, I bought this from uh, Speedlink, and it's just a competition pro. Uh, it includes 20 games, but I've never thing yield them. I haven't, uh, I haven't bothered. So yeah, USB connector, because um, you can plug a keyboard into this sort of A500 mini, and you can also plug in a, a USB joystick. So that will be my preferred choice We'll possibly end up selling that separately because ugh, I don't know. I've got no need for it, in all honesty. I have no need for it whatsoever. Right, so I won't go into the sort of like specifications of it uh, because I'm not really one of those people who like sort of like, you know, oh, it should be this, it should be that, it's this and that. I'm, I'm not bothered as long as it plays games from my past, as long as it looks good because, you know, aesthetically that looks amazing. We all know the keyboard doesn't work. Who cares? Just get yourself a fucking £10 keyboard, plug it in, and just sort of wank off over the old games you used to play back in your Mars house bedroom. Um, not me, by the way. So, yeah, so, yeah, arcade pool. That's a bit of a weird one, because I don't know. It just doesn't sort of, for me, doesn't sit right with the, uh, with the setup here. Now, obviously, you know, if you've watched other videos on the A500 Mini, you will know that you can um, put your own games on via the USB stick. Uh, WHD load sort of uh, thing. I don't know the full, you know, thing on how to do it, but yeah, it's it's there if you need it. So, I mean, as much as they give you these games, a bit like the other ones, uh, even if they didn't allow you to put games on, someone would always hack it so you could put more games on. So it's, you know... It's all good in the hood, should we say. Um, now, in terms of how it runs, I don't know, as I say. You know, I, I, I'd like to, you know, think that they've done the testing on this and it runs really well. Who knows? Um, as I say, today is the 31st of March. My pre-order has now gone to the 8th of April. So, yeah, just over a week away. Um, and I've chose to pick it up rather than get delivered. Just because of the excitement of going to the shop and picking it up and paying your hard-earned pennies to, you know, walk away with this machine that is, um, well, yeah, from, from your childhood or from my childhood anyway. So, yeah, uh, blah, 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 let me see. Pinball Dreams. <sighs> Jesus Christ, that needs no introduction. You know, what What a friggin' amazing game. Lost Patrol. Um, good game. Could never complete it. Could never complete it. I'd, I'd always get killed. Supercars 2, amazing soundtrack on that one. Um, Another World. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Wowzer. Wowzer, wowzer, wowzer. Now, Alien Breed 3D, um, I have got it on a stock 1200. It runs a, what is it, 1233 N030 processor card, anyway. I've done a video on it. Go and have a little search for it. But um, it, it still runs like a bag of shite. It runs when you when you sort of like play it like that. It runs really well. Open it up to full screen. It runs like a bag of spanners. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how this thing actually runs on this uh, A500 Mini. Very excited to see because it was a good game back in the day. Um, so what else have we got here? Zool. <clears throat> now we've all we well we all know we've had the remake of Zool. Was it last year? Um, I actually bought it from Steam for about three pound when it's sort of like uh, you know but when it come down in price good game not one of my faves 
not one of my faves. Um, as opposed to the Zool, like the army here, so you know. But yeah, it was one of those games back in the day, and, and like everyone sort of reverts back to it. Oh, remember Zool, remember Zool, remember Zool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, um, MC Chaos Engine. Jesus Christ, what, what a soundtrack on that. First level, I used to connect my Amiga to like a stereo system, put, pump the bass up and just blast it. Jesus fucking Christ. You know, just like, and it's a good game as well, really good game. I think I got to near the end and, and died. It just seems to go on forever. Uh, Alien Breed Special Edition. <clears throat> that was a good game. Uh, top down sort of thing, you know, just uh, messing around with guns, keys and aliens and stuff like that. Really hard game in my opinion. Um, I'm only really picking out what, you know, California games. I, remember, I actually remember that on the Atari Lynx. Never played it on the Amiga before. Say so Worms. I cannot and have I can't get into it. I don't know what it is. F-16 Combat Pilot. Yeah, not a bad little um, simulator, if I'm honest. Quack. I don't know. Paradroid. And that this Sentinel here. Wow. I mean, as I say, I played it on the Spectrum. I think it was the Spectrum. Or was it the Atari ST? No, it was the Spectrum. And it was just one of those games where it was like really weird, dark, sort of like strange, mysterious game. And... Um, yeah, I just couldn't, I just couldn't get into it. Oh, well, yeah, I just couldn't like, you know, I just couldn't make out what to do. It's just, and then I, and I get killed or I get caught or whatever, but I've got that somewhere on me, I think it's on WHD load. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of time this week, I think, and just have a little play and just to get to grips with it and stuff like that. So yeah, there's the games. Um, as I say, you can put more games on it. Kickoff 2, it wouldn't have been my choice of game. Or it would have with sensible soccer, but obviously licensing laws probably, you know, um, don't allow that. And possibly some people who do these games now have done these games. Uh, it's probably hard to track down, maybe, or they, they can't track them down. I don't know. So we have, obviously there's a reason why we've got them games. But yeah, put your own on by all means. Uh, right, okay. So from Chris Smith, he says, we've made sure that the 25 games are on there run to the best quality. Let's hope you stick with your word there, Chris. Uh, undetectably different to a real Amiga. Uh, they're just spot on. So, okay. I want to see how that... Regardless of what, you know, games have gone on here, that is the game I want to see running uh, tip-top sort of thing. Right, so shipping forecast. Uh, <clears throat> so, obviously, everyone will have undoubtedly heard a lot of ongoing computer ship... Ship? Ship, ship, ship. Chip shortages in recent times, a huge number of consumer products have been affected. Obviously, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, do you know what? What a fucking fast that is. Can't get them anywhere. It's, what is it? One, two years on. Uh, right, okay. Uh, to cars, even in cars. Yeah, to cars as well. Chip shortage for cars. In cartridges, as it turns out, the A500 Mini has managed to avoid at least some of the impact, which is all good in the hood. See me, Scar? I burnt myself on a, on a petrol-powered buggy. Uh, on the exhaust. Right, okay, so... Um, <clears throat> so, we've been lucky in that, or lucky-ish, that we are not using the current best of the Reed stuff. Uh, they're using moderate RAM chips and all that kind of stuff. The factory that makes them is literally on the same industrial complex as the company uh, that manufactures our hardware. However, it uh, hasn't been possible to dodge the issues entirely. Flash storage is more complicated because of it's uh, the same technology inside an SD card. The disruption uh, experienced in the shipping industry has been under the major factor affecting the A500 Mini's journey to the shelves. And ensuring the system would sh be shipped on time involved uh, a disciplined approach to design. So in order to bring this into cost and guarantee that we can deliver on time because this thing uh, got to be shipped over from China by boat, it takes ages. Uh, right, okay, so he explains that all the hardware and stuff needed to be designed basically for the summer last yeah, summer last year, the firm had around uh, the time, which is a really big uh, lead time on getting them to the shops. He adds, uh, but even with that lead time, Retro Games Limited hasn't been able to avoid problems. The costs are astronomical. Wowza. So that's had a massive impact. So he also states or starts, in fairness, 
when you say astronomical, Chris, I think you should say that uh, they've gone up in about 14 months by between 60, between 600 and 700 percent. So astronomical was an understatement. So there we have the uh, subscription to Retro Gamer. And yeah, you know, as I say, I'm not going to read the whole, whole, whole article. Um, when I get me a 500 Mini, I am going to sort of do an in-depth video. But at the time of release of the A500 Mini, by the time I come to do a video, there will be thousands and thousands of videos on the A500 Mini. So yeah, mine will just be a little tiny, minuscule sort of like, you know, video. Um, right, so what we'll do, I'll wrap this video up and stop a boring the hell out of you. Say Lancelot. Never played that on a specy. NES controller. Mm, nice, nice. I like. CJ the elephant. Robocop. Wowzer. On the Game Boy. Never played it on the Game Boy. Did quite like it on the Specky. The Amiga version wasn't all that hot. 30 years at the Super Scope. Some games I think that you can play with the Super Scope, is it? Master System 2. Although I did prefer the original Master System. Was that Afterburner? Yeah, Afterburner. The history of Afterburner. Wowzer, what a game. Albeit a very hard one as well. Wow, look at that. I've seen that one before. Alien Sojar. What's that one? Double fine. Yeah, I'm just going to flick through these. Machine Hunter. Project Gotham Racing. That was quite a good game. I come out. Yeah, really good game. God of War, never really played that. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm lying, I've never played it. Never really played it. Who am I trying to kid? Desert Island Discs. David Lumba or Luba, is it? I don't know. So we're getting towards the back of the magazine now. Um, one thing I do like about Retro Gamer is it is very, very colourful. I mean, I know like the games back then were, were colourful, but they sort of make the rear, the, the, the pictures not really stand out. Right, so we have at the back here, Hot Topic, Amiga Memories. Um, basically, these are memories of the people who were uh, within this magazine. Again, I'm not going to go into reading it all, but, you know, um, it's sort of nice just to read that on your own and just reminisce on your own sort of thing. Yeah, so, you know, just to pick a few out here. Uh, Dylan, I had a bit dangerous on the Amstrad. Never played Flood, though. Any good? Uh, I remember playing Sleepwalker on the local play barn. And what I believe was an Amiga 600. Wasn't that game only for the 1200? I don't know. Maybe yeah, the 600 version. Sensible soccer there. Um, yeah, some really good memories there. Carries on. Collector's Corner. Uh, My Retro Life. Mailbag. So we've got some sort of things here. People uh, having their say on um, what they're going to be playing first, I think. So Anthony Bull. He'll be playing Chaos Engine followed by Lost Patrol. Um, and, you know, what's good about the A500 Mini is if you don't know how to set up a Pi or you're just not sure, this is all done for you, you know, um, plug and play sort of thing, no sort of faffing around. Uh, I suppose you should just go on YouTube and then just YouTube how to put more games on it. 
So that concludes Retro Gamer's 10 page hands on special on the A500 Mini. Um, very excited to get it next week. So, yeah, um, all good in the hood there. Right, so there you have it. Um, anyone who's pre ordered the A500 Mini, good luck with getting them sort of like on the day that's stated. Um, I can't wait to get it, to be honest with you. Just, I say, just the excitement of just going down, picking it up, and then just unboxing it that that sort of like new sort of like thing smell stuff like that so yeah um cheers for watching as always uh, the next video will possibly be on the a500 mini i have got a few more sort of other videos to do regarding nitro cars and stuff like that and you know and um, just general fixing videos plus me the channel's doing well so more times getting pumped into that at the moment unfortunately well fortunately i should say um so yeah as i say cheers for watching as always yeah, and i'll catch you in the next video nice shooting son what's your name Chewy!